Hi and welcome to yet another awesome tutorial series here on YouTube that I am extremely excited about, which is called Zero to Interview Ready in JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, Go and Rust. So hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. Let's first talk about what this tutorial series is about. So this video is going to serve as the introduction for this series, as well as the setup of all five languages, so we can get started as fast as possible. The entirety of this series revolves around the idea of getting you to code. This is a hands-on series, so uh, get, get ready to start coding in five different languages. Now, this series is for anyone who has no prior knowledge of programming, but then they want to get into programming. This series is also for you if you have some knowledge or if you're intermediate or advanced and you want to brush up on your knowledge through solving different challenges. And the end goal of this tutorial series is to make you a problem solver rather than a copy paster, especially in the current age of AI. So how is this series going to go forward? The format is extremely simple. There is going to be one input and then there is going to be one output. And the way we are going to go about this is we are going to get that input. We're going to put it in five different programming languages. And then we're going to talk about how each of these languages is going to tackle that input, how it's going to approach that input, what methodologies it's going to use, and then how it's going to produce the output for us. So the input should produce the output at the end of each challenge. We implement that first for JavaScript, then we jump into TypeScript, which are almost the same. Then we jump into Python, and from there, we're going to go into Go and then into Rust, which are completely different than JavaScript and TypeScript. So this is how the majority of the videos are going to go. And throughout these videos or these challenges that we're going to solve, you're going to learn different aspects of each of these programming languages. And in the process, you're going to understand how these concepts come together to actually tackle a problem and solve that problem. So that's the end goal of this playlist. Now, how are we going to go with the setup of this video, with the setup of these programming languages. I am going to assume that you have no current setup, so that's how I'm going to go about it. The first thing that you need to do is open up your browser, go to code.visualstudio.com. Now, whatever you do on a computer, it requires some kind of a tool, whether you write, you want to create a table, you want to edit a video, or you want to write a code, you want to write some code. It requires a tool. The tool that I recommend for you is VS Code. It's possible that most of you have already uh, basically set this up. This is just for people who have no prior knowledge of programming but are pumped to start coding. All right, so go ahead, download this. It is going to detect your OS. Download it, go forward. It's extremely simple. From that point onwards, if you don't have Node.js, go to nodejs.org and download Node.js. After you have downloaded VS Code, it's time for us to actually go ahead and take a look at uh, what, how we can install these different programming languages. Now, the way we, VS Code works, it, it is going to require a folder that you open VS Code in. So go ahead, create a folder. I have already created this folder on the desktop and I've opened up VS Code there. If this is your very first venture into VS Code, let me give you some information. Here we have the VS Code logo, here we have the menu bar, here we have the title of the folder in which VS Code is open. VS Code is short for Visual Studio Code, it's a free software that we use to write code. Here we have all of our files and folders that we're going to work in, here we have some quick access stuff that we basically use for our projects. Now, the first one is Explorer, the second one is Search, this is for version control, debugging, we have some extensions, I've install, installed some extensions, the list of extensions is always going to change depending on the project that I'm working on, 
and uh, we're going to come to this when we go ahead and set up different programming languages. Now, we're not going to run anything in this video because running something in the programming language, that is actually our very first challenge. So I'm not going to ruin it. We are just going to go ahead and make sure that the languages are installed correctly. So once you download VS Code, JavaScript is going to be set up uh, instantaneously, so you don't have to do anything. The only thing that you can do is you can just check the Node version. So I'm going to say node hyphen hyphen version, and this is going to give me 20.16.0. Now let's go ahead and let's install TypeScript. So for that, I'm going to say npm. As soon as you go ahead and uh, as soon as you go ahead and install node, it's going to give you a command which is npm, which is used to installed install node packages. TypeScript is a node package that we're going to install. All right, and we install it globally. That's what this hyphen G means. It means TypeScript is going to be available in all of our projects. Uh, this is not usually the way you're going to go about projects is you will install TypeScript locally within that project. So it is a dev dependency of the project. So when you give the project to some other developers, they know okay what the dependencies for the project are. And if you install it globally, it's not going to go there. So it's, it's going to be a little bit difficult for other developers to know what dependencies are actually inside your project. So it is advisable to always install packages locally for every individual project, not globally. But for this specific playlist, since this is tutorial at the end of the day, I am going to install it globally. And now you're just going to go ahead and hit enter and it's going to install it for you. Now, how do you check the version? You're going to say TSC hyphen hyphen V. And this is going to give you the version 5.7.3. That's the current version. Now that TypeScript and JavaScript are installed and we know that they are installed, let's go ahead and install Python. So for Python, you need to go to python.org come right here to downloads and you need to basically download an installer. That is the difference between Python and the, the, the other two languages that we install. So I'm going to click on this. I have basically removed everything that I had, uh, Python based, Go based and Rust based. So we installed them together. These are going to be a little bit more tricky than JavaScript and TypeScript. So let's go ahead and install them together. I'm going to click on the installer, make sure to especially, especially tick mark this at python.exe uh, to path. Make sure to tick that mark. I'm going to come to customize installation because uh, it's going to put it inside this folder, app data, local programs, Python. This is very long. I don't want it to go there. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to come right here, make sure everything is ticked. In here, I'm going to say install Python for all users, even though there is just one user, and that's me. And I'm going to click on the, I'm going to click on the browse and from here, let's go to this PC. I'm going to go to look uh, here uh, inside of the drive C. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it Python. I already have created a folder for Go and then select this Python folder. OK, and now you can see it's going to put it inside the C within C drive within the Python folder. I'm going to click install. All right, Python is installed. Let's close this window. And after Python is installed, you need to go to its directory just to make sure that it has been installed correctly. So for me, it's in local uh, disk C in Python folder. And in here, there is this executable Python. If you double click on it, this is what's going to give you. So it says, this is the Python version right here, 3.13.1. Uh, this is the last updated time. And in here, you can write anything you want, Python related. So we know that Python has been installed correctly. Now we need to make sure that we can use it in here. Now, before doing that, you need to make sure that Python has been added to your, as a path variable. So go ahead and say environment, environment variables in Windows. And after you open up environment variables, you're going to see this. that says system properties, computer name, hardware, advanced. Inside the advanced tab, click on environment variables. 
go to path, click on edit, and in, sh in here you should see Python. So we have Python in the C drive right here. Python is right here, and then we have something else, which is Python scripts. Uh, now we are sure that it has been installed. I am going to keep this environment uh, open, this environment variables or system properties. I'm going to keep it open. All right, Python has been installed. Let's go ahead. Let's go to our VS Code. I close that so the changes take effect. Let's right click. I actually zoomed in the window, so that's why everything looks a lot bigger because I thought, okay, you should be able to see what's happening here. So for Python, the way we're going to go about this is we can say pi and then hyphen hyphen version, and this should give us the version. And this assures us that Python has been installed correctly. We can also run that Python environment right here as well. If you just say pi and you hit enter, this is going to give you that same environment where you can write Python code. And the way you can get out of it is you just say exit and clear. So now that this is done, let's go ahead and let's uh, actually jump into installing Go. Uh, for Go, what I'm going to do is I need to go to the Go website first and from here, I'm going to click on download. This is going to bring me to the uh, download window from here. Now I am on Windows, so I'm going to grab the Windows and I'm going to click on that. There we go. Go has been downloaded and let's click on it. Let's install Go. So click next, next. I don't want Go to be installed there. I actually have a folder in mind. Uh, that I want Go to go there. So I'm going to get rid of this program file and I'm going to put Go inside of that folder. Let's click Next. Let's click on it. It's going to take a while for it to be installed. All right, Go has been installed. Let's click on Finish. Now, the way that we can run this is first, we need to make sure that it is actually available within our system variables. So if I come right here, go to Path, click on Edit, we can see we have, there we go, here is the go bin. So let's move it up, move it up, move it up, move it up, move it up. There we go, it has been installed. And now I'm gonna close this. Now that go has been installed, before checking the go version, we need to go ahead and install the go extension. So if you just go to extensions marketplace and search for go, here is the one that, the one that has been downloaded more than 14 million times. So you need to install this one. Just click on it and it should say install. Just go ahead and install it. And right after that, you can write go version and it should give you some sort of a version right here. And this indicates that go has been installed successfully. After that, we are going to jump into our browser and we're going to go and we're going to install Rust. Now, if you want to install Rust, you need to go to the Rust website, rustlang.org. And from there, click on install. From here, uh, if you are on 32-bit, click on this one, this Rust up, or click on this one if you are on 64-bit. Uh, I'm going to click on that one. It's going to give me some sort of an installer for Rust right here. Now it's very important for you to really understand which one of these options that you need to select. The first option is if we want to install basically Rust by installing its prerequisites, C++ prerequisites, using this Visual Studio Community Installer, which is going to be several GBs. I'm not going to go through that route. The second one is doing it uh, manually. I'm not going to go through that route because I don't want to install prerequisites now. The main of this tutorial series is to just get started with Rust and with Go and to just have the ability to run the result of the file and get the output in, uh, get the output to show in, inside the terminal. That's the only thing that I want to do. So I'm just going to click three and this is going to basically select the GNU tool chain. That's the only thing you need to take away from here. I'm going to click install. Just you can press enter right here. It says just press enter and it's going to download a bunch of stuff. It's going to take a while depending on your internet connection and internet speed. And I think it's close to Rust C. It's close to being done. Using this Rust C command right here using this, 
we can actually check the version of the Rust. So in here, I'm going to hit enter or any other key. Let's come right here. I believe I should close that. That would be better. Just close VS Code, open it up again. And in here, I'm going to, I can say Rust C version hyphen hyphen version and then I need to get something from here there we go so we got that from uh, this rust so rust has been installed correctly and that is it so printing hello world uh, using these languages that is actually going to be our very first challenge so that's it see you in the next one